what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy this October 2nd. And generally, over the past, what, 15 years, 18 years? When it gets to be October 2nd around these parts, football's going well. LSU's rocking and rolling. SEC play about to begin. You know, we lived in the Breeze Peyton era where the Saints were one of the most consistent teams in the NFL. And then you walk in here this Monday. Wonderful weather this morning, right? Should have put a pep in your step. And yet, you're dealing with what I believe to be the most inexplicably bad, or maybe not inexplicable, because you can we can see why or what's going wrong, but you're dealing with what I think is probably the worst LSU defensive performance I've ever seen. I'm going to go ahead and say it's even worse than the Bo Pelini um, Mississippi State debacle. I'll explain why a bit later. Uh, and then on Sunday, you were treated to one of the worst NFL offensive performances I've ever seen. And it's a continuation of an offense that has now been bad for a couple of years. Uh, And so if you're LSU, you thought that you were a team and had championship aspirations five weeks into the season, you now sit here at three and two with a loss to Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. And if you're the Saints, uh, you were on the edge of three and oh. Three and O oh in the NFL, and now you're two and two, and you feel like you suck. And the offense does suck, and it has no identity, and the offensive line is horrible. So it's uh, it's a it's a rough day. Uh, football's pretty dumb anyway, dude. I like college baseball. Yeah. I like women's college basketball. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't. I, mean, I think we make too much of football. You know, we put it on this pedestal. It's ridiculous, dude. Uh, how are you feeling today, Jake? Well, you're, hey, your Bolts got it done at least, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah, they tried to hand it over, but they always do. Uh, yeah, still feeling Saturday. You know, Sunday, yeah, it helps a little, but not a lot. And there's a lot to go over. There's a lot to comb through. Um, we're basically Iowa. Uh, right? I mean, Iowa's offense... Uh, Compared to Iowa's defense, where the Spider-Man meme pointing back? LSU's defense is pointing to Iowa's offense, and they're pointing right back. For all of the shade that I threw to the Iowa offense, LSU's defense is that. Yeah. When you look at, yeah. oh, man, the Iowa defense is number two overall in total defense in the country, but their offense was, last year when you had 131 teams, 130. Yeah. What's different? A couple of spots? I think LSU's offense is fourth. And the defense is 117th, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're an offensive player for LSU today, like, how do you feel? I, I've never been a part of something that's been that drastically different on the same team. I've been a part of bad offenses. I don't know that I've ever been a part of offenses that are this inept. Uh, you know, I don't know. There was a 14-3 game against Florida back in the day that probably felt a lot like this at the time, and it's an awful feeling. Uh, the leadership of the locker room has to take control and try to make sure that you don't have fractures. Um, and and remember all those numbers that we read off Friday <laughs> about how bad they were? Yeah. And we were kind of like, man, it's, it's weird, though. It doesn't feel that bad, though, right? Well... You're right, because it's worse. Like, it didn't feel that bad. It felt way, it should have felt worse. It's worse. It's worse. And those numbers, we can update those, by the way, because they're hilarious now. You're basically just 120 plus in everything. In everything. It was uncanny Saturday night. We were losing. The Don Juan vibes were fantastic, by the way. I mean, everybody on the edge of their seat, everybody celebrating together, everybody having so much fun, and then just, like a pinprick just evaporated in a exasperated sigh of pain and frustration. Well, I mean, when you went up nine, you thought yeah. there's when no way yeah. that they're going to stop LSU's offense. Like, yeah. there's just no way. Like, as bad as the defense is, they're they're going to score, but it's okay because you're going to score. And they didn't really stop you. I mean, they stopped you once. Even then, we can get into this. I think there's a real case we made for going for it on that fourth and seven. Or at least approaching the third and five play call saying we're going for this no matter what. Yeah. 
Uh, now, I'm not saying that it's like 1,000% cut and dry. To that point, there's 2 minutes, 47 seconds left around there. And if you give them the ball at midfield, yeah, maybe there's an opportunity where they like get a couple first downs and then they line up for a field goal. But I think you almost have to operate on the Pat Mahomes principle. What did the Lions do week one when they were facing uh, Kansas City? It was at the end of the game. They had a chance to close it out. They had the ball the 50. Are they worried about giving like what's the difference between Pat Mahomes getting the ball the 50 or getting the ball the 10? Functionally nothing. What's the difference between an Ole Miss offense that averaged 20 yards a play for the first quarter getting the ball the 12 or the 50? As you saw, it was nothing. I mean, I never thought that I would reach a stage in my life, in my LSU fandom, Jake, where I was yelling at them to let them score yeah. so that LSU, like, oh, my God, they're going to score a touchdown? Let them in, let them in, let them in, so that LSU yeah. could get the ball back with more time left. And it almost worked. No, I mean, you, they weren't trying to, but it almost worked. Even with an offensive series down the stretch where you didn't throw it to two of the best receivers in the country, it still almost worked. I mean, Chris Hilton had two hands on the football in the end zone yeah. with an opportunity to tie the game up. Yeah, it was a beautiful play by Daniels. which, And that's really the biggest takeaway out of everything is that, uh, make no mistake, you are wasting the second best quarterback season in LSU history, full stop, and it's not even particularly close. If you go look at, so Caleb, who, who, who's in the lead for the highs right now? Penix? Um, go compare Penix and K- Jaden Daniels' stats. They're, they're essentially the same, except Daniels also runs the ball. Also has rushing touchdowns. Also has a ton of rush yards, high average. I mean, it is the second, it is a New York City. I'm not going to say win the highs, but it is a New York City season, and you're three and two. Caleb Williams is the uh Yeah, he went up. He went player. up because Michael Penix, they won, but he didn't throw for a touchdown this week. And so Caleb Williams plus four fifty. Okay, Penix so eight it was, plus yeah. eight fifty. Jordan Travis plus a thousand. Uh the point then it's Williams stat line that I'm talking about. Uh but compare the two. They're the same. And you're three and two. And so mm. instead of celebrating the incredible evolution of this quarterback who on Saturday was making throws, Jake, that we didn't think he was capable of. Yep. And he was making them consistently, and he was making them in ultra-high-pressure situations. Third and goal, down two scores, got to have it. Like, all these moments where you had to have it, including the final play of the game where he puts it on Chris Hilton in the end zone, dropping balls in the buckets, throwing with anticipation over the middle, behind zone defenders, something that I never thought we'd see him do. Throwing one-on-one on the sideline against defenders. Remember after Florida State, we said, I just don't think you make those throws. I mean, I, I was I was hypercritical of that fade that he threw uh, at the very beginning of the Florida State game, which now that doesn't even look like the same guy. Yeah, um, He's just unstoppable. And instead of celebrating him, giving him roses, and reveling in that greatness, we're being sucked down into the mud of anger and frustration due to the most inept defense I've ever seen. And the Polini, so this is the thing what I mean by why this is worse than Polini. Is that with Polini, it was clearly such a sign of a of a coach that was so checked out and didn't care and was just gonna obstinately run a scheme that was clearly not working. Like there were it, it was fixed like you could get better there. Um, I don't know that you're gonna be able to get any better here. It's awful all the way around and it's it, a lot of it's personnel. The secondary is atrocious, horrific, horrendous. I mean, the safeties can't, nobody can tackle, actually. 1 through 11, nobody can tackle. I don't know. I don't know. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Um, the safeties take the worst run angles I've ever seen. The cornerbacks get beat one on one constantly. They're absolutely terrified out there. Nobody has any athleticism. We're just seeing broken ankles all over the place. The defensive line plays a yard and a half off the ball, and then they run these twists. Where you got Makai Wingo dropping three and a half yards deep trying to like scrape over and make a tackle. What are you doing? They're catching. You're not getting off of blocks. Why are you so passive? What happened to being disruptive to dictating the terms? They're catching it. And it's and 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 then and and honestly, Jake, that is a bit of what's screwing up some of the linebacker play and the run fits in the secondary is Ole Miss pushed your freaking ass in. Like they 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 shoved you wherever they wanted. I mean, Whit Weeks is maybe the only guy. Him and Harold Perkins are the only guys with a yeah. pulse on this defense right now. 
we told you about the run fits against like Gremlin. It's like, oh man, I, if that continues, it's going to be bad. And then like it looked a little got bit better, better but then State? it came right. Yeah. Yes. What in the world is Mississippi State? Yeah. <laughs> if this defense shut them down, that's a whole different story. But the run fits were just bad against Gremlin. They were having success. It's like, why? It's, you got guys coming in there with no purpose. They're ducking their head. They're diving. Like, why are we diving at quarterback's ankles in open field? What like he, you have a quarterback hurdle you in the middle of the field like that like that? What those are the things angles? Can't happen. What are the angles? Why if a guy is if he's barely pressing the edge of the box, are you running to the sideline? And then he cuts it back and he's ten yards inside of you. I've just I've never seen I've, this team uh, on 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 just from a pure football perspective. Not that that matters. This team desperately misses Greg Brooks right now. Um, uh, it's. Mm. And, and, and again, the, the, what I'm most disappointed... Okay, so it's, it's weird, Jake, because the secondary is one thing because they are uh, limited talent-wise. And it's kind of a perfect storm of bad, right? Uh, you had some bad high school recruiting. You had some guys leave early mm. that, that probably shouldn't have. Um, you had some guys transfer that you wish wouldn't have. Uh, you, you bring in guys like J.K. Johnson, ends up getting hurt. Denver Harris, maybe just not that guy. The awful Greg Brooks news. Um, so it's, it's so it's, it's it's a bit of everything. But what it's created is a completely town depleted secondary. But you know who's not town depleted? A defensive line that features Harold Perkins, Mason Smith, Makai Wingo. Even Makai Wingo was bad this game. And so at a certain point, I'm like, okay, if Makai Wingo is regressing, and I know he works his ass off, and I've seen what he can do before, what the hell are you coaching? And so with the defensive line, that's what, like, when I see them lining up a yard and a half off the ball, I just don't get it. I remember going to Ed O. Ole Miss camp back in high school, Jake. And he used to always say credit card, credit card, because the only thing you should have been able to slip between your mask and that ball should have been the credit card. Get your ass on the line and attack. Forget this two-way read catching guys. Forget it. You let him dictate you. Let him shove you. Just infuriates me. And so you're taking the only talented group that you have and you're making them bad and they're playing bad. And Mason Smith has got to get active hands. He's so busy wanting to toy with offensive linemen. He's fighting every play, hand fighting every play, but not actually shedding ever. Just involved in these petty little squabbles every single play. I've never seen tape that was this frustrating to watch. I felt like I was uh, the bad guy from Da Vinci Code. You know, the cat of nine tails. He's always self-flagellating, just slapping his own back. When I forced myself after the Saints game to go watch this LSU film for three hours, masochistic behavior. And with the defensive line, remember Jimmy Lindsey, um, not not coaching right now. Yeah, obviously had um, again. That's sort of the perfect story of that as well. And quote. then so now you bring in Pete Jenkins back. I think it's his sixth time to be back um, as an LSU coach, going to be an analyst there. And so, like, they noticed the things that T-Bob noticed on film. Yeah. About some of the issues that they're having on the defensive line when you bring Pete Jenkins back. And, look, Pete Jenkins is somebody that's done this for a very, very long time. He's 82 years old. But they they know that they have an issue, and they're bringing him, him back. And so we'll see if that helps. Another thing that, like, I never need to see again is – Someone on the defense standing flat-footed, not moving their feet, and then diving. Ugh. How many times on tape, T, did you Why see so somebody like standing there flat-footed, not moving their feet to get in front of the running back, but just standing still and then diving? No do, running through a tackle. Do you think you're going to get any, doesn't matter the SEC running back, you name them, anybody from Vanderbilt to Ole Miss, do you think you're going to get anybody down standing flat-footed and just diving at someone's ankles. Okay, I would also like to propose a rule. Um, if you're on defense, your ass is not allowed to celebrate until they punt. Like, I, I don't care. Do you know how many times guys tried to act hard after some sort of second down play before getting absolutely decimated on third and 11 the next play when it actually matters? If even one of these defensive backs does the seatbelt celebration, you're out the game and you're not coming back in. Like, it's... It, it is, you, you're not, nobody is scared of you. No one is intimidated by you. You don't get to act like a badass when you're a weak ass. And, and so like, no, no more. Until they're punting, 
We have a hard no celebration rule. Wow. Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.